All right, welcome to another episode of Let's Go Brandon Green. Today we have on the show Mansi Shangvai. Is that how is that your name? Like Mansi Shangvai. Mansi Shangvi, yes. Mansi Shangvi, okay. And she's uh, originally from India. Yes. Yeah, but Mumbai. Mumbai, Mumbai in India, yes. Yeah. And and so, how long have you been living in America now? I have been in America since 2015, and this is the fifth country okay. I am living in. Oh, what other countries have you lived in previously? Um, Libya, India, Ghana, Dubai, and now USA. Oh, wow. Well, you get around. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have a bit of experience there, and you're a, you're a life, uh, like a mindset coach. Yes, I am. Um, I'm a mindset self-love coach. Self-love coach. Yes, a self-love coach. Yes. And you're probably curious okay. what that means. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, uh, well, I've had a, I've had quite a few self-confidence um, coaches on, on the on the show, and they um, they've taught me all about like the other other world where people aren't confident. Um, which is, I guess, I've never had that um, that problem. But um, yeah, it seems to be that there is quite a demand for you people. And um, as I ask all of them, what made you just self-appoint yourself as? Oh, I'm so confident. I'm going to teach other people confidence. Like, how does that come about? How do you come about just being a normal, regular person to being a super person who's a self-love coach? Well, um, it's because of my own journey. So for the longest time, I, I, was, I dug a hole for myself and I allowed myself to be crushed. Nobody was doing it knowingly. Nobody was abusing me. But I just made myself the victim. I just made, I just made myself feel helpless and hopeless. And so I would hate myself for the decisions I took. I would resent other people for that. So, and I just became, t- my views became very tiny and myopic. Like there was just this much I could see. And what I saw, I did not like. I did not like anything. Nothing about my life I liked. And so there reached a point where I was like, oh my God, even I can't love myself. How can anybody else love me? You know, like, and I got so tired of feeling hopeless and helpless and a victim. And so I was like, well, something needs to change. So I did a few workshops. I got coached by my coaches. I, I worked on myself. I read books. And, and slowly and steadily, there was a shift that took place. Like, and I can feel the difference now. So, you, so you, times, were, you were one of your people that come towards you in saying that you were down and out and you seeked a mindset coach uh, or something similar, the same as the people that seek out you. So you're, you're. So this is good hope that the people who are seeking people like you can eventually go full one hundred and eighty and become the people helping other people because they're so um, happy and comfortable with themselves. They must be. That must be a like. They must think, wow, if if that could be me or half of that be me, like that would be amazing. Yes. Absolutely correct, Brandon. You hit the nail on the head. Yes. Well, right. So you, um, where, what, around how long ago was it that you were, like, I guess, depressed in the state of depression and um, you really had no love for yourself, no self-confidence? Um, when was this? How, like, how far back? So actually... I can I can um, I can trace it to even when I was a teenager. You know, there are aspects of it I can trace it even when I was a teenager, and it peaked in my twenties. Again, no no one was to blame except me. I take full responsibility for that because of my mind, because I I pictured myself as a victim, and so it peaked in my twenties, and it was only in my thirties that I finally decided this is it. I can't live like this anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, this is my one but life. But you're a very, 
you're a very nice and bubbly person now, like how you're presenting to me. Is this how you presented as a person with depression and no love, no confidence? No, not at all. No. You wouldn't be talking to me now, would you? No, no, not at all. If I was, if I was the person I was five years ago, I'd be like, oh, my life is not happy. You know, I'm a different (laughs) person. (laughs) But that's what I was telling you about. But what changed is the story I tell myself, the stories that are going on in my head. At that time. Right now I can tell you are high on life and you are one happy soul. And I'm very interested to hear how you've, you've gone full 180 because you are... You're doing like that's how easy it is. You just got to tell. Like I've never had the problem, but I'm also probably the most arrogant, self-confident person ever. Like I don't care. You don't have to worry about what's going on outside. It's just do you. You know. Yeah. People are too busy to stop and worry about what you're worrying about about yourself. They don't care. They move. They have to live their life too. So yeah, that that's my advice anyway. But yeah, go on. Let let's hear your. Yeah, how you are now. Yes, and I completely agree with you because for anybody, it's not my job. It's not your job to change anybody unless they are willing to create a change, you know, because everybody's perfectly exactly where they need to be. Like I had to be at that place to arrive to this point. But what Mm -hmm. changed for me to arrive to this point was the willingness when I was done being that person. And then I wanted to create a shift. And now here I am with a shift. And what is different is now I no longer want to be a victim. So even when there are times when I'm tempted to showcase a story where I'm the victim, I stop myself because the story in my head has changed. Earlier, my stories were about, oh, poor me. And now the story in my head is, wow, I love this life. I like what I have. I love where I am, you know? So I'm no longer the poor me. And so I don't even feel like narrating stories where I am a victim. So now I want to, now I want to showcase myself as having fun. And I want to invite everybody else. No one likes losers. As, as the great Donald Trump says, no one likes losers, you know? Like, don't be, like the whole victim mindset, there's no need to be brand yourself as a loser or... Yeah, so you've done a full one eighty, which is great because living life as a as a as a winner, as as us, like it's just so easy and so great. Um, I luckily can't relate to how you felt before, and a lot of the uh, mindset coaches that I've talked to, they've all got this story of I was a depressed loser victim <laughs> mentality. Like they've all they've all said the same thing, and that's. That must be how you get into it because you're so compassionate about the person you were before and you can relate to them and you can just, you you come from the place where you can help them. And um, yeah, and that's why a lot of you get into it. Um, yeah, that's why I don't, I don't see what all the fuss is about with all this um, mindset coaching and that because like I said, I've never, I'm lucky that I've never had to do, I just thought everyone was like me and happy. Yes, and everybody is, and that and that's our birthright to be happy. And there is um, about fussing. I don't know how to answer that question, so I'm going to ignore that. But um, but I do want to say that we that there is no right or wrong in this case. You know, everybody's exactly where they're supposed to be, and when you ready to create a shift, you create a shift. The way everybody's like, I wasn't like this. No, no, no. Person. I disagree. You need to shift now. You need to stop being a victim now. Like now's the time, and it's as easy as just being happy. It like, is. That's my advice. Like, yes. Yeah, but, but so go on. Yes, and it's and, and and I agree with you because once I decided that okay, this is it, it happened. But it but there was also a process where you have to forgive yourself. There's also a process where you have to be able to to have the courage to state the truth. You know, stop okay. depressing your voice. Stop 
stop hiding away. Like for example, I have to acknowledge that I am unhappy right now. Because only once I acknowledge that I'm unhappy, then I know what to shift, what to change. I'm unhappy mm-hmm. with with what? Then you then you then you have the courage to say, okay, I'm unhappy the way I think. So then you know what you need to shift. Yeah. So, yeah. so I got a question. Um what where were you unhappy with when when you made this mind change of like, wow, my life's actually great? Um what what were some of the things like so the viewers the listeners can relate and say, Oh yeah, that's what I'm going through. So what what things were going through your head where you just your life was so bad and um yeah, like so they can help relate to so where interestingly you were my life was not there. bad, but my life was bad over here in my head. In the story. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but so what were you telling yourself? Why was it bad? Yeah. Yes. So I was telling myself, well, I am so unlucky. I'm living in a country away from my family. And I am so alone. I don't have a support system, whereas I did. I did have a support system over here. But I was so ingrained in feeling like a victim that everything, like, for example, this is the fifth country I am living in. I got so tired of, you know, every country you go to, there's a learning curve that happens. I got so tired of, you know, relearning everything. That was a victim. That that was feeling like a victim for me. So, mm-hmm. so, so for me, is this a common theme amongst like Indian people that have moved overseas, or no? I don't think so. No, no. Because a lot of them okay. move willingly. A lot of them move here for, uh, for a better life. A lot of them move here for higher education. None of those parameters were true for me. I had not moved here for higher education, and again. Maybe if this was the only country I had moved to, I might not behave like this. But this was the fifth country. What happened? Did some aliens abduct you and just picked you up from from India (laughs) and just drop you in America? Why are you there? I I know. That's exactly what I asked myself. Why am I here? (laughs) (laughs) But um, well, there's worse places to go. And I agree with you, but and this is not the this is not the worst place to be. This is a good place to be, but um, so for me, I had to realize that I was unhappy with my th- my my thoughts. My thoughts was cre- were creating the problems, and so mm-hmm. that's where I had to create a shift. The way I looked at myself. So I was very unhappy with the way I perceived my own self. So I had to acknowledge mm-hmm. that that I look at myself. Um, with the with the eyes of a person who hates me, and you were a um because I see you've got a family there, so you were a wife and and a mum feeling like this. Yes, I have. Yes, I have two kids. So yes, that would be a big strain on the whole family dynamic, I'd imagine. Um, and it would be much better now. How no one likes to be around you know, sad, unhappy, depressed people and um, they're just, you know, if you feel tired, everyone around you feel tired and but the idea is we want to get you to shift to be, be, we're free birds, aren't we? We're just like, you know, I don't know how you, you must feel really like wake up every day on, wow, I'm not in a trap anymore or in a vice or whatever you were feeling, I don't know. And I hope I don't feel it. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, so, how long did this shift happen from when you said to your and actually, what was the breaking point where you said, "Right, enough's enough. I'm going to change." So, um, I had a huge fight for a very small thing, and I cried so much. My everybody got disturbed by that fight, and I was and I thought suddenly that, "Oh my God." Even I can't like myself right now the way I am. How can anybody else like me? You know, so, so so there were so there were two or three such moments, and it's been over a period of time, and I have taken steps every time when I realized this. Like there was one moment I realized that I think I'm the victim, but then I'm also not being fair to the people around me. I'm also abusing them indirectly. You know, I might not physically abuse them, but I'm shouting, I'm screaming, I am being resentful. That's also a form of abuse. So while I am so busy thinking that I'm a victim, I'm also the abuser. And that shocked me, you know, 
that that was like a slap on my face for me. So these are the two pivotal moments where I actually thought that I need to, ch- I want to change and I'm going to change and I'm going to be a person mm-hmm. that loves life. I'm going to be the person that is so happy I can flourish wherever she is. I'm going to be the person that I can love. Yeah, well, you're definitely that person for what I'm saying. You are a happy little Vegemite, as we say here in Australia. Um, what, so, and how, how long have you been helping people um, yeah, try to get to from where you were to where your mindset is now? Um, probably a year and a half now, where I've been uh, willingly and openly and enthusiastically helping people. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Um, how did you first get into this? Oh, so um, it was during the pandemic and, uh, you know, everybody was homebound. People were free. A lot of people were struggling also with the with, with being at home. So I had, mm-hmm. I started a small little book club with my neighbors. I started another book club with my cousin in India. And, it, and, then, I, and then it just took off from there because the experience was so beautiful for me and the people around me. And then I joined coaching groups. I coached. People offered to pay me. You know, they're like, no, we would like to pay you because it's, it's such a profound experience that we're having. So it just gradually morphed. And it was a very beautiful um, flow, you know? So, mm. yes. Well, I uh, bet so- you'd be loving it because there's no greater feeling than helping someone, I, I, I think. Um, yeah, and then also seeing results too, um, you know, like uh, the the results of when you help someone and it all goes well, um, there's no honest better feeling than seeing you put a smile on someone else's face, you know, um, and I hope you've unlocked many smiles and continue to do so as well. Yes, Brandon, exactly. So, you know, when I'm coaching and then they get this feeling of, ah, and then they, and then their face just lights up and they smile, you know? Really? Yes. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I like that. And they had this profound realization of how there's a different way they can see things. There's a different way of working, of operating, of saying a different story, mm-hmm. you know? And then, yeah. yes, I can do this. How you did not see it before. So when that happens, you're absolutely correct. It's such a joy to, to behold it, to see it happen to somebody else. Right. Um, are you religious or anything? Um, I don't necessarily mean that I do. I follow rituals. But yes, I do believe in the divinity. I do believe in a higher spirit. I do believe that we are here to learn. We're all together. Is it you that did it or the higher spirit that, that, that helped you? What, what is it? I'm sorry. It? Can you repeat what you said? Is it the higher spirit? Is it God that helped you or was it you? I think it happens together because nothing can happen without me willing to do it. But there's a support system Mm -hmm. that's there. And if I call on it, it helps. Yeah. So, of course, and do you want any drugs at the moment? Drugs? Oh, I've never done drugs. You are very happy. Like. You are one I have step away from the dark ward, I tell you that. I don't drink. Yeah. I don't smoke. <laughs> well, you are one happy person, and it's good to see because, yeah, I would have loved to see what was going on before, you know. Like, you would have just been a depressed, like, yeah, it's good that you are so far from from where you were that you can help people. And if I if I was ever going through issues you'd be the first person i'd call and say i want what you've got because you're a freak um have people noticed this about you they like you're like too happy like you're glowing i have had people tell me that oh how are you so happy all the time and i'm like well because i Mm -hmm. chose it i chose to be happy so now that's it you choose it that's it you choose it you choose Because I said to my friend one day, he's complaining nonstop. I said, 
Are you listening to yourself? All you've done for this one and a half hour car drive is just complain nonstop. And he said, yeah, even I was starting to get sick of hearing myself complain. I go, man, you're a madness. When do I complain? Like, we both went through the bad, same bad shit just then, like, in the car. Like, fuck, we got held up with traffic. But did I complain? And I've got more of a reason to be there than you. Yeah. I go, but I choose not to say anything and I choose who cares, let it go, be happy. Like, I don't know how I'm there and you're there now and he's not there and other people aren't there, but you just got to stop taking life so serious. That's the thing, isn't it? Is that what it is, you think? You just got to just realize time passes and then, yeah. I just think it's what you, it's it's committing. So, for example, you know, when when you're driving, You're committing to driving safely and you commit to that every minute while you're driving. But you commit, I'm going to drive safe. Every minute till you reach from point A to point B till you're driving, you are committing constantly to driving safe. When you're eating, you are committing to eat. Every time you, you put food in your spoon and put it in your mouth, you're committing to eat. And the same thing applies every day, every minute. What are you committing to right now? And it's and it's talking it's, to it's, you. Yes, you come in and talk, and I'm talking. About, and I'm committed to talking to you right now. But then I'm talking to you. What am I committing to? I'm committing to feeling this way. I'm committing to feeling joyous. So then, what happens is what you're. And once you build that muscle of staying committed to what you want, so irrespective of what's happening around you, you will stay committed mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, I never lost, lost sight of the picture, I guess, and he was like, he lose, lost sight of just getting there safely. He was like, his bigger problem was not getting there on time or something. Is that what yes. you're trying to say? Yes, I'm saying, what yeah. are you committing to right now? He was committing at that time to feel irritated, and he kept that commitment okay. on for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that explains it. Like I said, I'm very dumb at all this stuff because I'm just so lucky that I'm not like anything to do with that. But that 100 percent explains it. Like, how, how did you learn? How did you figure that out? Because every day I would wake up and I would choose. Earlier, I would choose to be sad every day when I woke up. Now mm. I choose something different, and when I choose, yeah. I'm so coming just- into something. Because you are as happy as a nutcase, um, how? Tell me about the people that knew the old you, and now the people that knew you. Are they like, Mansi? Are you on drugs? Please tell me, like, <laughs> what is going on? What are they like? What? Like, what's your husband noticed in you, and other friends? Like, you are this depressed person from no. India. Now you have moved to America. You are very happy now. What is the problem here? What is- problem <laughs> so i'll tell you what, what is going on with you mantri tell me mantri are you on drugs are you taking <laughs> so, the drug because <laughs> you are happy and it's good to see but what yeah so what what have the people noticed in yeah so in it, you like strange. have they noticed it? Be- Surely. This, this truly shift has happened in the last three years but i haven't been to india since since that time which i'll be going right now in summer and uh, so the people who've known me before and the people who've known me now are different sets of people. But yes, people have mm-hmm. seen that. Yes, we've seen a change in you. So they have they have said that. Surely, you know? surely they've seen you on Facebook and things like that. Yes. And oh, and that's yeah, Mansi. And, and, she's a she's a cousin and, of mine, but she's very depressed. And now, she, did you know that she's a mindset coach? Like, what is going on here? Is she a yes. scammer? <laughs> like, and, they, and they have asked me what shifted. And I've told them, well, I just decided to not be that person anymore. And then I choose. I choose every day. Every minute. You can I choose. am choosing what do I want to do. So there are times when I get angry. There are times when I get sad. There are times when I'm also, I get overwhelmed with emotions. I get filled with resentment. You know, some old memory pops up. And I give myself that time. I give myself Okay, we have ten minutes to dwell in this, you know, to let to, to let my to, to be aware of what is hurting us in this. But I do mm-hmm. it as a feeling of fascination. That okay, this feeling's popped up. 
where I feel wronged. What, what, what did I feel so wronged about? Why did I feel so wronged in this case? So there's a feeling of fascination and wonder in this, you know? So instead of feeling trapped in that emotion, I, I give myself that space to think about it. And once you give yourself the space mm-hmm. to think about it, and you, and you commit to it only for, the, for five minutes, and then you're good. And so then you can pick yourself up from that point and recommit to what you want to do, what you want to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I just can't believe someone... I didn't know it worked or, yeah, people can go from being miserable to what you are, which is the opposite, yeah, which is uh, great. Um, Yeah, so if anyone's listening here and think, oh, it's very good for you to... You know, you, you, you're you lucky, but as Mansi said, it's just a mindset thing. You've just got to flick the switch, choose to be happy. You've got to choose it. That's what I always say to my, my partner. I say, you've got to choose it. If you don't choose it, how's it going to happen? You've got to choose it. But, yeah, it's just stop saying that, oh, it's all right for you. I'm never going to get there. No, Yeah, you're 100% right. You're never going to get there saying you're never going to get there. You need to choose it. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely correct. That's, that's it. You've got to choose it. Yes. And whatever you choose is okay at that time for you. Maybe you need to be wherever you are, but choose it consciously. Make that decision consciously. Don't let your emotions or the world choose for you. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, well, like, yeah, it so it's easy for... Yeah. If you, if you want to stay sad, okay, then... Fine, stay sad, but choose it. Choose to be sad for that yeah. day, you know? And then the next oh, day, that's choose. That's very good, yeah. Choose, but yeah. choose it consciously. Yeah, next time someone's carrying on, I'll say, okay, continue to choose. Well, I guess I say that anyway to them, like, okay, that's the problem, move on, move on, like, move on. <laughs> you know, me and you know, because we're there, but we it's not something we can just explain to you guys in, you know, half an hour or something. Um, but Mansi, she's the expert. She's she she's the one that that knows how to do all that. I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm just at the place where she's at and where you guys want to be at, and that's be happy. So, how do they get onto you, Mansi, for a bit of help and to get yes. some of the pills that you've got? No pills. Again, no drugs, <laughs> no pills, no alcohol, no smoking, nothing. That's <laughs> it's just it. a choice that you make. That's great. And if you want to choose, you can find me on Facebook. It's Mansi Goradia Shangvi. You can send me a DM. The first session with me will be a gift from me. Just, to, just for you to feel how the session flows. I use different tools. I use visualization, affirmation, inner child work, mirror work, a lot of laughter. And those are the tools I use in my coaching practice. And if you would like to experience it, feel free to DM me on Messenger. Then um, my Facebook profile name is Mansi Goradia Shangvi. I'll, I'll have all the links in the podcast and on awesome. the YouTube. So, just, so, don't. so just type on that link, send me a DM, and we will get the ball rolling. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, yeah, great for having us here, Mansi, and um, for having you on. I'm very grateful for it and you can come back anytime and I hope all goes well and um, you have a fantastic uh, weekend coming up there over in uh, Texas. Yes, we do. And thank you, Brandon, for having me. Well, half your weekend is gone, but have a a wonderful rest of the weekend. No worries. And thank you so much for listening in. (laughs) It's been a pleasure. I'll catch you later. Yes.